Sports Now. I'm Ahmad Hicks. Jim Rich has the night off. So I brought in my buddy to help me fill some time and talk all Minnesota sports. You guys know this man, <laughs> CCO Radio's Henry Lake. If you don't know him, you sure can smell him because he always smells good when he walks <laughs> in the studio. I don't, what cologne do you have on today? Uh, man, why are you trying to give away my I got, secrets? You I got to give us a tip or something. A, another 13. I got that on tonight. 13? Another yes, 13. Man, look, if you guys get next to him, I'm, pull out your checkbook. <laughs> you're you're going to want to buy what he has. Now, I want to hear what you have to say about the Twins baseball season that's right mm -hmm. around the corner. They opened the year with the Kansas City Royals at the end of March. For you, what are the expectations for this team this season? Expectations are that you run it back, that you go back to the postseason, that you win the division. Um, clearly, I think from a talent perspective, of the Minnesota Twins are the class of the division. So yeah. um, I know that there are a couple of losses there in the starting rotation yep. that they have to address. But all in all, I think that most people, even if you look at all the, the sports books in Vegas, everybody has the Minnesota Twins as the favorite to win the division. Yeah, speaking of starting rotation and them missing some pieces, Sonny Gray, he's now in my hometown in St. Louis pitching for the yep. Cardinals. Joe Ryan expected to do more. Chris Paddock brought over. Do you think, do you expect the same production out of this starting rotation that they had last year? That, that's a great question. I'm not sure that the production is going to be there because one of the things about Sonny Gray is he's got the experience, right? He's been there, done that. He's been um, a guy that's been tried and true for, for so many years. Mm -hmm. But I think that this season, those two names that you brought up, number one, Joe Ryan's got to continue to elevate and he's got to continue to develop into being the pitcher that they thought that they were going to get when they made the trade and sent away Nelson, uh, Nelson Cruz a yeah. few years ago. And then secondly, Chris Paddock, I think he's kind of the wild card, right? Because he's a guy that's not really had a lot of innings that he's pitched and he's had the durability, you know, questions out there, which continues to be a question. Mm -hmm. But I think that when you look at those two guys, they got the talent. And I yeah. think that Ryan's going to take that next step. What is Paddock going to give you? I think that he has to give you something if you're thinking about taking the next step in the postseason. Now, speaking of taking the next step in the postseason, we know good pitching gets you there. Yep. But good hitting moves you on to the next round. Last year was just Royce Lewis stepping up in big moments for this yep. club. Who are you expecting to take on a bigger role this season? Well, Royce Lewis needs to continue to, to be that guy, right? Because when you talk about what Buxton's been, mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of questions about his durability and about his health. Absolutely. Um, um, we need him to be the guy that we expect him to be. Um, Royce is going to slot in there. I think that there are some names and some younger guys that we have to continue to think about. And I don't think that Twins fans really talk about them enough from a depth perspective. Like who? Is Trevor Larnick. Okay. Um, Alex Kirilov. Okay. Um, and then Jose beyond Miranda. that, Jose Miranda is another name too. And, and I'm not saying that you have to hang your hat on those guys being um, producers in terms of like trying to replace right. guys like a Michael Taylor that you lost here in, in free agency. But but the bottom line is that depth, because we saw the depth and what it meant to this team and this Absolutely. organization last year, yep. they have to be those young guys that can take that next step too. So do you think that there's anybody in their division that will challenge them, or do you think the Twins walk away winners again? Uh, I think that they win the division. Um, clearly, Kansas City, I think, added um, some pieces, and they added to their payroll, and everybody's freaking out about the Twins <laughs> and the, and them um, not spending as much money as, like, we got to be realists here in right. Minnesota. You're not going to continue to, to exceed your, your payroll every single year. I think Kansas City's going to be better. Uh, I'm not a believer in the White Sox. Me neither. I don't believe in the Guardians. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I think we're the class. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So, we've, we've covered all the bases here with, ba with baseball, mm -hmm. but now I have to talk to you about the Timberwolves. The last time I had you on Sports Now, we talked about, it was before the trade deadline yep. and if the Timberwolves had enough pieces clearly it seems like they do because they're still number one in the Western Conference but yep. when you look at the standings they may be paired up against like a Golden State Warriors or the Los Angeles Lakers in the first round does that scare you no it doesn't scare me at all like you know to get to a, a championship you're gonna have to face some good teams right, right? Mm -hmm. and the bottom line is this what did we talk about the last time we chatted it hasn't changed defensively they have to remain being one of the top teams if not the best team in the league defensively if Rudy continues to play at the level that he's been, Anthony Edwards has been exceptional uh, defense, defensively as well. Jay McDaniels, we all know what he can do. If they continue to be as good as they've been defensively, I don't think there's any team in the West that they can't be. You know, I saw a clip on social media last week where they were just like chasing after the ball, closing <laughs> out on every play. And I'm like, what team will want to play them in a seven-game series in the playoffs? So speaking of, the Thunder are the second-best team in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. Do you think they pose the biggest threat for the Timberwolves? Uh, you know, no. I think the biggest threat is clearly the, the reigning NBA champions, the Denver Nuggets. Yeah. The Denver Nuggets are... 
I mean, they got the Joker, man. Like, <laughs> like he's he's a special, one of a kind type of guy. He's arguably the MVP again. So I think the Nuggets are realistically the team to beat, even though they're not the number one seed uh, or the number two seed. They're still the team to beat because they have that championship pedigree now, and they have uh, Nikola Jokic. Okay, basketball's covered now. Now I got to get to you on football. We we covered all the yeah, ground we're tonight. Covering everything now. <laughs> Justin Jefferson. There's been mm -hmm. a lot of speculation about the team not going to pay him, maybe letting him go and trade you know rumors and whatnot there's been a lot of speculation on social media that the Vikings are interested in possibly trading him they have not come out and said that I have not confirmed that that is just the rumors on social media yeah. do you think that would be smart no absolutely not you have a generational talent you have one of the faces of the NFL and let me let me say this and let me be clear as I look into the to the camera oh, yeah, do you think if if Justin Jefferson is traded away from the Minnesota Vikings, then we need to look at replacing the general manager. Let me just be clear about that. Mm. Like, th this is not a thing that, in the way that we should operate in the sports world. Mm -hmm. You have a guy that you selected just a couple of years ago, and he's setting all kind of records in the first, what, three, four years four in the years, National yep. Football League. Yeah, that's just not a good, that's not a good thing to do. So I, I'm not in the camp um, or, or in the social media realm that's saying trade away Justin Jefferson because you need good players to win championships. And he's not only a good player, he's a great player. He's a great player, a future Hall of Famer, and he's yep. looking pro for more, probably more than $150 million. And with the NFL Pay the man. Salary, NFL salary cap just went up $31 million. So yeah. there's room to pay him and possibly Kirk Cousins. And we all know he wants somebody to throw in the football. So Yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, a lot to be. <laughs> <laughs> that toll here in the next couple of weeks for the Minnesota Vikings and their free agency. Henry Lake, thank you for joining me. And uh, you guys can listen to him on first pit, final pitch. Final on pitch C for the Twins. Radio after Twins games all season long. He'll have all those hot takes like he had today. Thank you. And we'll see you on the other side of the break. We have